Did you know that NewViews users have the ability to pay suppliers and accept deposits from customers using Electronic Funds Transfer, or EFT? This feature has been available in NewView since version 2.28, and the only fees for using it are those your bank may charge. In this video, we're going to look at using NewViews to pay suppliers by EFT. Before we can do that, there are a few things we need to set up in our books. In our books, we go to the bank account we want to use for EFT. If we double-click the bank account, the bank ledger is displayed since these are the details we were looking at last. Notice that there are two EFT info tabs at the top of this pane, Canada and USA. We're going to set up a Canadian bank for EFT, but the process is very similar if you're setting up a bank account in the USA. Your bank will give you the information you need to enter in the EFT info table for your bank account. You only need to enter this information once. You choose the name for the EFT file that is created for transmission to the bank when you want to pay vendors. You can use any file creation number to start. NewViews will automatically increment this number every time an EFT file is generated. On our table of vendor accounts, we click the Accounts tab and change the view to EFT Payments Information. To set up any vendor for EFT, position on the EFT Status field and press F3 to change the status from Inactive to Active. The vendor will need to provide you with their bank ID, transit, and account number, which you enter in the corresponding fields. Notice that you can also use the Trade Tax tab in the bottom pane to enter EFT info for an individual vendor. The last part of the setup is to create EFT journals to track payments made by EFT. Here you can see we've created an EFT journal for payments to suppliers. Once these settings are in place, it's easy to pay vendors by EFT. First, we mark our vendor accounts in a block and issue the Tools Pay Account command. You fill in the Pay Suppliers prompt as you would normally, except there are two additional fields for paying suppliers by EFT. The first time you pay suppliers by EFT, enter a starting reference number for EFT payment transactions in the EFT Start Number field. This number will then increment automatically. You will also have to enter the name of the journal to be used for EFT payment transactions. In this example, we have set Confirm Edit Payments to No, which means all the payments will be processed automatically. If this field was set to Yes, we would have the option of confirming or editing each payment before it was processed. Let's click Continue or press F5 to proceed. Now that we have processed the payments, we can dismiss the Pay Suppliers prompt by clicking Dismiss or pressing F4. The Tools Pay Account command checks the EFT status of all the suppliers in the Mark block. When a supplier's EFT status is active, it adds the payment transaction to the EFT Payments Journal and does not print a check. The transactions in the EFT Payments Journal are used to produce the file the bank needs to withdraw the funds from our account and send them to the supplier. In the EFT Payments Journal, we can see the transaction that was added by the Tools Pay Account command. In this case, only one invoice was due for a supplier with active EFT status. If several invoices are due, which was the case on October 31st, a transaction is added for each. To produce the EFT file needed by the bank, mark the appropriate transactions in a block and issue the Tools EFT Payments command. You will then be given the option of creating the EFT file. Follow your bank's instructions for sending them the EFT file. 
Remember that you chose a name and location for this file when you entered EFT settings for your bank account. In our next video on EFT, we'll look at how to accept deposits from customers, which is very similar. Make sure you're running the most recent version of NuViews to take advantage of this time-saving feature.